Hi everybody, Lips from Anvil here. You are watching So Fucking Cool. You know it. So if you can cool here with lips from Anvil, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. So you just released a 17th album. Yeah, 17th album, man. Pounding the pavement. Yep. What we've been doing for 40 years. <laughs> the 41, actually, I think. This yeah, this year, was man. the 41st year, year. That's right. That just like vacuum cleaner salesmen. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we go door to door, city to city, town to town, set up our gear, do a demonstration on how we kick ass and then we sell a bunch of merchandise to you and go to the next town and do the same thing pound the pavement today's the first stop of the pound the pavement tour is that right pardon me today's the first stop of the pound the pavement tour that's right yeah this is the first stop on our u.s run yeah now 41 years man that is a long time i see bands that like slayer you know calling it quits when do you think Anvil is ever going to do their last hurrah? When they take me away on a gurney. You don't retire. You don't retire from this business. You die. It's true. But, well, think, yeah, think I mean, it, it, and those who, who attempt to retire end up going back. How many times did The Who say it's their final tour? Right. <laughs> and every time they come to realize what... What do we do? They get back on the road. For sure. And the Rolling Stones, they're still going, man. Going strong. Right? And they're and they're great. They're great. Why why would you lose it? If you you know what? Especially vocals, okay? If you sing properly and have sung properly and you quit smoking, there's no reason you can't sing till you they put you in your grave. If you can talk, you can sing. Right. That's so, it. what's if you don't get arthritis if you keep if you don't, if you keep using it, you won't lose it. Definitely. It, it, it's all about that. So, if there's no reason you can't do this till you're very very old and worth discovering, begrudgingly so that it that guys are going into their 70s and 80s, rocking and rolling, and there's nothing wrong with that. Definitely. Just the same way as the audience is growing old with them, begrudgingly and, and, <laughs> and in denial and all of it. You know, the first person to say, those old guys, is old themselves. Right. How old are you? you yeah. just, hey, I've been listening to them since I was a kid. Well, you're not a kid anymore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think some bands that do actually take the time off get a little bit better? I mean, there was a certain... No, I never. I don't. I don't. I don't believe. I. I've never taken any time off. I've never stopped. You know, lots of guys do, and that's that's their business, and they can go ahead and do that. But you ne then you ne you never really catch up. You never make up for lost time, you, and you never you, you you can't you can't make up for lost time. Well, see, what I'm getting at with that is like Twisted Sister just called it quits. J.J. French just did a big interview. And he called out the Rolling Stones and Saxon and Judas Priest. Well, he's a very foolish, very, very foolish man who's looking for looking for attention. See, that's what I'm saying. Pla it? Plain and simple, that's what that is to me. I mean, um, you can't, he's not in a position to say anything. For sure. That's why I'm saying it. He's not in a position to say anything, especially when the singer of his band is continued on without him. Exactly. What is that saying? He's real bitter. He's real unhappy. He's projecting that out there at other people. I feel sorry for him. I love the guy, and I feel sorry for him. Honestly, I know I know Jay personally. Great guy. Really funny, comical. Good, really nice character. I mean, you know, <laughs> one of the last uh, one of the last times we were at a festival in uh, France. And I'm sitting there with the guys in Raven, 
Okay. And we're all sitting around this round table, and Jay walks up. He sits down, and we start. We just start joking around. And he goes, you know, people ask me if we do drugs. He goes, of course we do drugs. Blood pressure pills. <laughs> Diabetes, uh, insulin, uh, yeah, we do lots of drugs, and I'm just cracking up, man, it's funny. But, I mean, at the same time, you're out doing gigs, you're trying to carry on, and you do. But, I mean, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, rip him a new asshole. Right. He did that to himself. Yeah, you know, he did it to himself. I, I don't, I don't know what his motivation was. I, I really don't. I, and I, I think mo most of it is, you know, reflection. You know, he's not feeling good about where he is in his life. So that's I mean, I, that, that, bottom line. I mean, that's. I'm, I'm, maybe, a year or two younger than him. I don't see any end to it. You heard what I just said. I'm exactly. going to go till I die, man. Right. There is yeah. no, re there's no such thing as retirement. And if you do it properly and you keep yourself in shape, there's no reason you can't do it till you die. For sure. For sure. And you certainly don't, you certainly don't carve those who are, who have done it and doing it even longer and harder and a better job than you ever did. Right. Come on, man. You're going to carve on Keith Richards, really? I mean, come on, did you write Satisfaction? Did you write, did you write, you know, Paint It Black? Did you write, you know, all the, I mean, those are just the early stuff. Yeah. You know, come on. I mean, I see. You, you can't, you can't do that. You, it's just not, it's not right. You can't, you can't do it. It's just, no. I, 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 I look up to my elders. You know, I met Ron Wood, and I, I, absolutely wonderful, wonderful man, a great guy, and it was actually so heartwarming to see. I mean, this is like five, six, no, actually, it's about nine years ago. I went to the Classic Rock Awards, and Ron Wood was there, and so was Jeff Beck. Now you know that those two guys played together; that, that those are old bandmates. And you saw when I saw and witnessed. These two guys horsing around and joking around, it was like looking at two 18-year-olds. It just, it's just like, wow, look at that. I mean, these guys are, you're talking about 60 years of being friends. Look at that. For sure. And, and, and they're acting, the, and the, 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 the jovial smiles on their faces, the, the, the embracement of life, you could see how happy they were with where they were in their lives and there's no, there's, n there's no time, like time didn't exist, they're still the same two guys that they were when they were young teenagers, they're just elderly men carrying on the same way as when they were young punks, you know what I'm saying, yeah, and, and, and I witnessed that and I'm going, look at that. You know, it's absolutely, it's just heartwarming to see that, you know, and uh, I mean, that's what it all is. We're all just people. You know, I spent, last night I went out for, uh, went out for dinner with a, f a friend that I've known since I was three years old. He decided very, you know, I would have played my life with the guy. The guy was my bass player and, and, and co-player since I was, since we began playing. But he didn't want to do it as a living. Right. I did. It was in my heart to do that. He, what was in his heart, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the best electronics technician that the world has ever known. And he's amazing. The guy fixes, has been fixing my amps for 40 years. You know what I mean? Right. And everybody else is in Toronto. <laughs> and so that's what he wanted to do, and this is what I wanted to do. You could say that it's 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 the same road. It's going after your passion. It's going after what you love. And he may have loved music, but he didn't love it the same way that I did. But he didn't. He doesn't begrudge me or look at me in in a, in a jealous way. In the same way that I don't look at you, lucky son of a bitch. You got to work at Steve's Music for 35 years, and you've made a fortune fixing amps. 
while I struggled and slept on the floors of clubs and shitholes all over Canada t till I made it. You right. know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's not like I... It, it's the road I chose and my passions. And he doesn't look down at me, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't take that, didn't take that, that route. He took another route. But here we, here we were standing or sitting at the restaurant in our 60s and talking about our lives in a, in a certainly in a, a retrospect. We're, in a, we're the same guys. Definitely. It was Ron Wood and, and Jeff Beck standing there or sitting there having a laugh talking about the time that we did this or that and having a good time and realizing you know shit man we both got what we went after that's all that, that it is and and to a certain degree that's all that those guys are that's all anybody is you know when you, i mean you got to really hand it to the old the old dogs in a certain sense especially like the rolling stones they got all the money they could ever, they could never spend the money they got. Right. They could never run out of it. Even if they tried, they could never run out of it. So they're not doing, they're not carrying on the Rolling Stones because they need to make money. They're doing it because they have the passion still. They still love what, they love being in front of a crowd. They love to play music. They like, they like each other. There's, there's, there's reason to be there. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. For sure. Right? That, that, that. That's more of what Jay should have been talking about rather than the opposite. What are you doing? You're a bunch of carcasses on stage. What are you talking about? How dare you? Yeah, 100%. You never grow old. Your soul never grows old. Your body does. And if you're good to your body, your body will last till, till the last days. And you'll be able to do and let your soul out and be able to enjoy it. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. And age has nothing to do with it. Because your soul never grows old. It's really true. Definitely. 100%. I mean, I don't know about how you guys feel, but I know how I feel. I, don't, I'm, I haven't aged a day since I was 16. You prove that every day. I mean, day, every honestly, in, I mean, in, my, in, my, in my, my, my soul, not really. The, the, the only thing that's aged is my lower back. <laughs> now, now, you're at a, a time in your career where other bands must look at you as an influence. I mean, you've had highs and lows to see where you guys are now. Like you said, 17 albums. Does it feel good when somebody comes up to you and says, man, this is the reason I started it? Well, you know, it's really interesting. I, I sat in a, a hotel room with Lemmy in 1983. Okay. Okay. We were on a on a, a tour all through the UK, and Motorhead had us let us open for them. And we here we had a night off, and I sit down with Lemmy, and he and I'm going, you don't know how does it feel to be so in, influential and so inspirational to to all of us musicians. You don't realize what you've done. Right. Do you realize what you've done? He just looks at me and goes, Hey mate, in 10 fucking years from now, there'll be some bloke sitting across the table from you saying exactly the same thing. <laughs> you, don't, you don't really realize it, what you're doing. Right. You, you just do what you do. And you carry on the way you carry on. You, do, you, you don't really think about... Oh, I'm an influence and I'm an inspiration to others. I mean, right. what, what kind of way to go through life? I mean, come on. Yeah, definitely. You know, you. you I mean, I'm the type of person. I'm. So, I, I was in Barcelona, uh, a couple like two weeks ago, and I'm sitting eating at a Mexican restaurant, of course. <laughs> and I, I guess I'm about to sit, eat at the Mexican restaurant. I'm looking at the menu, and this guy walks up to the table, and I'm. Go well. I'd like a burrito, and he goes. I'd like a photograph, and I go. What? You're not the waiter. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes. No, I'm a. I'm a fan. Oh shit! I'm a. I'm famous. I forgot. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You don't think about. Honestly, I don't. At least I don't think about those kind of things. I'm not. I'm. It's not what. 
I mean, it's part of why I, I did it. I wanted to be famous, obviously. I mean, you don't do this unless you want to be famous. So, I mean, that's why I did it. And I'm, I'm extremely flattered. And I was very, I, very gracious. So, thank you so much. Here's your signed picture. Come on, sit down with me, right beside me. Have a picture. Fine. But it's like, I forgot. Right. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not thinking about, I'm famous. Look, at, look, who I'm sitting here. It's like, no, it's like, whatever. I thought he was the waiter. Right. That's awesome. I'm glad to see that you're not, you know, in the little VIP section of the restaurant. Pushing yeah, well, no, I hope not. <laughs> I don't need that shit. I'm a, I'm a human being, man, and we all are. Now, this is going to be the 10th anniversary of the Anvil documentary. Yeah, the documentary, uh, with the, it, it played at uh, the Sundance Festival and the Hot Docs hot dogs festivals. It played at a lot, a number, a number of, of, of uh, film festivals 10 years ago. Do you guys plan on doing anything like to re-release or anything special to commemorate the 10 years? Um, well, next year uh, will be the 10th year, 10 years anniversary of it going into theaters. Okay. And there is some discussion about possibly it going back into theaters and us doing the performances in the theaters, like we did in the initial, initially, that we called that the Anvil Experience, which is great. You know, the the credits finished, and then out I come, and I'm running down the aisle of the. Everybody's eating popcorn, and it's like, oh shit, right. <laughs> it slips. He's right there. It's like, yeah, that's awesome. That, 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 that really, really cool, uh, cool feeling. You know, to to be seen on a silver screen, and then in real life, right two feet from you yeah yeah so exactly. it's 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 extremely exciting um, and we're talking about possibly doing that again in, all across America again so, so we'll see hopefully it will happen you know I mean it, it was an, an amazing documentary I mean it, it truly showed what it's like to be a rock star the highs and the lows and everything well the thing goes. is and 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 I think that that it would be a good point to do it because the Along with the performance comes a Q&A, and of course everybody wants to know what happened. Right. Well, obviously, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> lots of records, lots of touring, lots of fun, man. It, it, it was um, really justice got served, ultimately. Yeah. I mean, that's how I kind of see it. No. I mean, although to be really heart of hearts, I would have continued with movie or not. Right. I'd still be sitting here tonight. For sure. I mean, that's really the truth. And the other, the other aspect, if the movie, if the band sucked, the band would have been finished after the movie. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And here we are 10 years later, everyone's going, oh, it's 10 years, you have 15 minutes of fame. Well, uh, if that 15 minutes is 10 years now. <laughs> right. And it's getting, we're bigger now than we were when the movie came out, way bigger. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean uh, uh, truth be told, I mean, come on, it's like, uh, think about this. Okay, first it comes out in theaters, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're seen by thousands of people, right? Then it comes out on DVD, and then a few more th thousands of people buy the DVD, and it gets out like that. Then it goes on Netflix. Yeah. What do you fucking think happens after that? Exactly. How many millions of people see that? Worldwide. For Worldwide. Sure. Okay, so now what does that do for my career? How many people would like to see, after seeing the Anvil movie, want to see the band live? Yeah. I'm in business, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got endless gigs from now till I'm fucking, till I retire. Right. Well. And that, I don't need to be, I don't need to be ACDC. Okay, I'm very happy with being a handball right. and playing, playing the Ironworks. I'm good with that. This is great. I got something to do tonight, and I got something to do tomorrow night, and I've had something to do the tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow night because there's so many hundreds of thousands of people that have not seen the band, and I don't necessarily have to. And you know what? I think that it's a, a beautiful thing, an, an honest thing. I don't mind being the biggest bar band that ever existed. I'm having a fucking time of my life. I mean, what can you say? 
If anyone wants to be jealous or begrudge me, too bad. <laughs> We there? One second. Now, taking everything that you've learned in the past 41 years, if you had a chance to do anything different, is there anything that you would do? The al an album with Motorhead. That would have been fucking awesome. That's the only thing that I would have wished that I'd done. I couldn't do it. Because I was obligated, I was under I was under record contracts and everything. I couldn't leave Anvil at the time when I was asked. But I would, you know, as far as as far as uh, musical opportunity uh, um, to, to just for the sake of music, it would have been quite interesting to have done it. But it's just hard to. Um, fathom the, the the concept of the material that was on the Forge and Fire album becoming Motorhead. Right. You know, and maybe some of the material on Another Perfect Day becoming Anvil. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of weird. Definitely. Definitely. But it could have been cool, but that's the era that we're talking about, but it never happened. But having said that, the knowing that it could have is good enough i guess For you know sure. what i mean and yeah. and lemmy and i were friends all through his life and that's that's a that, that's cool i'm i'm happy with that definitely i miss him and he wish always wished me the best just the same way as i always wished him the best you know it's just kind of like he said brothers but Separated. Right, right. You know what I mean? You, you can't, you can't, you can't play in the same sandbox, but you're still brothers. <laughs> well, I mean, from talking to you now, it seems like that's the route that you're definitely going to go on. It's the same way as Lime. You keep on playing until the day that, unfortunately, you can't do it anymore. Well, that's right. We're, whatever's left of the, the 80s bands, we're, you know, it's like I always call them, we the, call it, we're the last of the dodo birds. Right. You know, we're going to go extinct, and so will the music. And the only thing that we're going to have left are the records that we left behind. Because you're never going to get that again. No, definitely you can't not. Replace, you can't replace this shit. Not at all. And it's, I think that a lot, of, a lot of people are coming to realize that aspect, and that's why the attendance has been so good for, for, for the older bands. Mm-hmm. And we better, because I'll tell you, in another 15, 20 years, there won't be arena metal bands to go see. I, I, there's because not. there's no infrastructure, and there's no way for any bands to get that big. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't see another Aussie. You know, that, that, that there's not going to be another Aussie, man. There's not going to be another Judas Priest. There's not going to be another Iron Maiden. There's not going to be another Saxon. There's not going to be another Anvil. Just like there's no Motorhead. Right. Motorhead's gone, man. You can't. Right. Who's going to replace that? Not one you you can't. You can't. <laughs> so the, the whole point is, enjoy it while it's here, attend the shows, and fucking celebrate, celebrate what it, what it is and at the moment. Live for that moment. Every moment above ground is a good fucking day. That's it. Because that's all that life is, man. You know, that's all my philosophies, you know, you gotta be positive, man. Well, with that being said, I know you have a yeah, show I've got to do. A, got yeah, and interview. I've got other guys to talk to. People wanna follow up, they wanna buy the tickets, they wanna buy the new album, where are they gonna go, what are they gonna do? Is it right to anvil.com? Um, yeah, you can come check out our stuff on the uh, Anvil Facebook page, and that has all kinds of uh, links to get to our merchandise and our buyer records and everything that you ever, everything that's Anvil. <laughs> Perfect, man. Thank you so much for your time. No problem, man. Can you shoot 